Hey guys, Ashley D. Will here. Welcome back. Today we're talking about care frontation. Care frontation, not confrontation, but care frontation. What does care frontation mean? It is a way of addressing problems with people when you really don't want to, and it makes it much more likely to succeed the meeting that you're having and what you're sharing with them. It makes it much, the situation much easier to succeed and the higher rate of um, them accepting and receiving what you're saying. Okay, so this is for relationships and things when they get, ugh, you know, you don't want to do something. This is what this is all about. So we're talking about care fronting. Now this is a book by, uh, it's called Care Frontation by Arlene Drake and you can get the book on Amazon. So we're talking about care fronting, and so uh, one good definition of the care fronting is constructive, compassionate feedback. If you wanna sum up what is care fronting, it is giving constructive, compassionate feedback. You notice it doesn't say criticism, it doesn't say anything like that because it is constructive and it is done from the heart. And you're giving the feedback because the person needs it and they may not know they need it, but you and other people may know they need it. And so that would be a time to do a care frontation. Now notice the difference between care fronting and confronting. Confronting a lot of times is negative, right? and a lot of times unproductive because it's negative. So the opposite of that would be care fronting. Care fronting is positive in many ways compared to confronting and it is usually very productive, okay? So that's what we're moving toward is productivity, growth, improving relationships, letting yourself be heard. Now some people um, may, that may, um, resist this or you know really say I could never do that are some examples would be the phlegmatic personality there's the choleric phlegmatic the sanguine and the melancholy and the phlegmatic hate conflict they hate it so if you have that temperament you may just this may make you crazy or if you just hate conflict like I do, I can't stand it. But sometimes I have to deal with it because it's just part of being in this fallen world. If you're super sensitive to things, it can really kind of make you want to throw up <laughs> to think about doing it. Especially if you've been through trauma, you're like, forget it. And sometimes you just don't want to because you're afraid something's gonna go wrong, something's not gonna work out, or the situation will blow up, right? So these are all just legitimate type people that will struggle with this. And I would recommend if you are one of these type people to learn over time and however the way would work for you, learn how to care front people. Learn about care fronting and it will empower you to be able to deal with life in a much more mature and productive way than if you just sit in the back or walk away or never speak up. It's, you're kind of wasting your, your um, space there when you could be learning skills that can teach you and help you to practice enough to be comfortable doing it. And you can move into a whole new world of dealing with problems. So some of the uh, what would we say the um, qualifications of whether you're not you're, you're going to care front is one of them would be that the relationship has to be an important relationship you're not going to care front you know someone at the bus stop usually you know it would be an important relationship your family relationship a spouse a child someone at work that you see often um, it would be a significant relationship. That's the point. And the, the uh, purpose of the carefrontation will be, could be many things, but some examples would be to share information. You don't know this, I know it, and I care enough about you that I want you to have it. That would be an example. Another reason that you could want to 
care front someone is to clarify some feelings that you have. Uh, maybe the relationship has had some bumps in the road and you're trying to, y'all are both trying to repair it and you just want the person to know how you feel at this point. Um, and it really, is, a lot of times, has to do with boundaries and that's very important. Um, I would say most of the times it has to do with boundaries. But, so that is a little bit about who would resist and who needs who really needs this more than other people and then some qualifications and some topics that it may involve if you're going to care front someone so what is the intention of the care frontation remember it's not confrontation it's care frontation this is from the heart and the intention is to support the person and to uplift the person it's not to criticize them and start a fight or argue, no. It is to support and uplift. That is very important. That intention produces positivity and productivity. See, when you're constructive, compassionate, and giving feedback, it will be supporting and uplifting. When you do a carefrontation, it is also very prayerful. You pray before you do this. You want the Holy Spirit with you and covering the whole situation and on this other person when you do this. And that will maximize the fruit that comes out of it. Okay? You want to watch your tone of voice. If you're still angry, if there's some resentment there, you need to go pour out your heart to the Lord or go vent to someone who is a safe person so you can get that out. Because if you don't and you go and you try to talk, these edges on your voice uh, can really set people off and they put up their defenses right away. So you must use a neutral tone. And if you can't seem to do it, maybe someone else could do the care frontation with you and say the things that, are str that you would struggle to say. And then as always, we want to use gentleness because if there's any anger or uh, buttons you're, you may unintentionally push with this person in the care frontation, the gentleness will smooth it over and help them to keep their head straight, you know, keep, keep their um, composure. So what do we do when we are care fronting someone? What are some of the things that we will do, some of the steps and things to remember? You're going to, first of all, ask permission. You don't just go up and care front someone. You say, hey, um, you know, Mary, do you have a little bit of time later we could talk? There's some important um, issues that I would love to share with you. Gently, she can say no, that's fine. You know, she doesn't want to do it, that's fine. But you, you, you come across as asking because they have to be in. They need to buy in to the, to the situation with you and they have to want to meet with you. It may be acquiescing, but at least they have to volunteer that. When you're speaking, you're never going to say you. You're never going to start a sentence with you, okay? You're going to stick to yourself. This is a boundary. You're going to use I statements. I care about you. I want to improve our relationship or I want to work through the problem we had last week. You're focusing on yourself and what you want. Then as you move into the conversation or whatever you're going to say, you're going to say, I noticed that. And when you say the things that you have noticed, they need to be observable facts. You don't want to talk about things that you can't observe clearly, okay? You want them to be observable facts. And then, you know, that would be an example like, I care about you and I want to improve our relationship, whatever, da 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 da, da. Then I, later in the conversation, I noticed that you got very uh, upset yesterday when Bob said that to you and you threw the papers on the floor. I noticed that. You're not judging it. You're not saying it with a tone of conde condescension. You're just speaking the facts, just the facts, ma'am. 
okay? And then after that, you can always ask the meaning. So what was behind that? What was going on inside you when that happened? See, you're just asking for them to share what was going on so that you can maybe be of help. So you may have to ask the meaning. We do this with children when they're having some kind of trauma behavior. We stop and we say, hey, you know, we help them decompress. And then we say, what was going on inside you then? Um, okay, and then you can mention how it affected you. See, you're not making any judgment about them. You're not saying you anything. How it affected you. I felt so bad for you. Or something, you're going to say it gently, and you're going to uh, give compassion in what you say, and it's going to be something that connects your heart with their heart because that will get them to trust you, and then you can kind of lead them, by example, to a better place, right? So how it affected you, oh, that hurt my heart to see you so upset. So it's something gentle and compassionate, but it's how it affected you. And then you can make a request. So do you think that it would be a good idea if we um, had a meeting once a month or once a week or whatever would be appropriate in your situation so that we could make sure this doesn't ever happen again? Something like that. And then you can ask a question, further questions. You're making a request to meet more often, for example, or you can start asking questions. And you don't want to use the word why when you ask the question because that a lot of times puts people on the defensive. So when they're telling you something, and you want to know why, they say, well, I got so angry. Your question could be disguised by saying, you got so angry because, and let them finish that sentence. Instead of saying, why did you get so angry? It sounds like, you know, cross-examination, like they're, like they're being attacked. And so that can shut them down. So these are just some examples. And then over here, we have Ephesians 4.15. And this is so important to learn to do is it says speak the truth in love to one another speak the truth in love to one another that's what we all need to learn to do in the body of christ with one another in the body of christ and then with those in your family and those at work it's wonderful beautiful thing so i've said this in many other videos but in order to speak the truth in love First of all, you have to be able to speak. And if you've been shut down your whole life, then you need to learn to speak, first of all. And then, over time, you will learn to speak truth. And then once you get that down, you can try to deliver it in a way that it can be received, and that would be in love, okay? So this is the whole goal of the carefrontation. You're speaking the truth in love. You're doing it in a way that it can be received and where the other person can be supported and lifted up. What speaking the truth in love does, the scripture says, is it grows you up in Christ. When you can regularly speak the truth in love, you are growing up in Christ. Okay, so that's what we want. And even for these people over here, phlegmatics, people who hate conflict, people that are sensitive, trauma victims, and people who just don't want to do it, you can do this. How do I know that? Because I hate conflict, I'm sensitive, and I've been through a lot of trauma, and I really don't want to do it. But I do it because the Holy Spirit has taught me, and He's given me skills and ways to, to do it. And I just don't want to do it. But I say, Lord, if you are leading me to do this, I have to do it. I can't say no to Him anymore. So I trust Him, and a lot of beautiful things happen. So you don't want to do it in your own strength, but you want the Lord to lead you in this. And he will make a way for you to feel more empowered by being able to care front people. And you can be an agent of healing and restoration wherever you go. So if some of these people or these type of um, people refuse to do it, they say, no, I'm not going to do it. I don't care what you say. I will never do that. Let's go over that issue, okay? When you refuse 
to learn skills and you refuse to obey the scripture, these are the things that are happening. You are bound in the fear of man. You're afraid of people and that's why you won't do it. You will be developmentally arresting yourself in Christ. You know, like a citizen's arrest. Well, arrest means to stop. So when you're arrested, you are stopped growing developmentally. You have frozen at a certain age, and it may be where a trauma happened or where a big conflict happened, and you said in your mind, I'll never let that happen again, whatever that would be. So you're bound in the fear of man, and you're developmentally arrested in Christ. You are not fully grown in Christ, and you never will be. You never will get to maturity in your faith, and that is very sad, and the devil will be very happy about that. I guarantee you, you will be crippled in Christ. In the spirit, it will be like you're walking along like this with a with a with um, some kind of crippled situation with your hip or your foot. That's how you're going to be in the spirit, and you're choosing to be that way when you refuse to obey and to learn skills. Almost anyone can learn skills. And when you learn the skills, you focus on the skills and you end up doing it and you didn't even realize you were doing it. So it's so much easier than you think. Um, and by the way, this, whenever the Lord is wanting to call you to do something or there's a huge opportunity in the spirit for you, Nine times out of ten, the enemy will put up a big uh, spirit of fear in front of you to intimidate you. Um, he does other things too, but that is very common, that you will just freeze in fear or you'll run away. And so that's what's going on up here, number one. And so really, all you really need to do is familiarize yourself with and learn a little bit at a time and then practice with friends or online or in classes or whatever you can, however you can, with your friends, you're gonna practice and learn and um, care frontation skills. They're out there, they're on YouTube, There's book. this book has been written. Uh, wherever you go, you can find care frontation skills. So if you want to be empowered to be able to do this and be a healing agent of the Lord, just go start reading about it. And the Holy Spirit will guide you as you read and rustle the leaves and watch videos. And it will grow in your heart. And it will maybe help you heal even. Okay? So just familiarize yourself with the confrontation skills. Learn them. Practice them. And this is not a burden. This is not stressful. This is not a to-do list. This is an opportunity to do the will of God and to be used by Him. That's all it is. And... Well, I don't even know what that says. Only, oh, yeah. Only learning the skills. Oh, learning the skills will take the fear away. That's what I'm trying to say there. When you learn the skills of confrontation, this will slowly disappear. And you will be freer to do the will of God. So you want to learn skills and that will take away the fear. See, that's that's the way to go because the smoke and mirrors of the fear is there because the enemy can see what God wants you to do and he wants to block you. So just keep that in mind. So we're just talking about care fronting. And so I hope that that was helpful or insightful in some way to you and that you would listen and follow the Holy Spirit for whatever he leads you to do, especially if he's leading you to learn how to care front. All right, you guys have a blessed day and I'll see you next time.